I've always wanted one of these things. Now this is 30 LEDs by 64 LEDs, so that makes 2048, a nice sort of binary number there. Now the red and green LEDs, so they can be blended to make yellows, oranges and things like that. Uh, and it's a graphical audio spectrum analyzer type thing if you wish. Sadly, it isn't actually that big. It's only this big. And uh, this is 15 centimeters by 30 centimeters, so that's six inches by 12 inches, near enough. And this is just the display portion. Now you plug in the audio processing board on this and send in some audio and that kind of uh, switches on and off the LEDs and gives you that nice sort of graphical display like that. So I'm gonna put this on the desk, show you how to assemble it all. It's ever so easy, there's no soldering required at all. And uh, I'm gonna see just how sort of accurate it is. But I think it, it looks pretty good. But how accurate is it? Hmm, I'd still prefer one that size though. Right. So, uh, before I go on, I must state that Banggood do not pay me to make the video and I don't get any sort of monetary kickbacks from any of the sales. I do, however, get the item sent to me free of charge. So I've just got to clear that up because of the YouTube rules. Anyway, uh, carry on. Right, this on the website is the MS3264 version 3 music spectrum display. I guess the 3264 is the uh, 32 by 64 LEDs, so that's where that figure comes from. And uh, I've put a little link down in the bottom in the comments there for you if you want to go and have a look at one of these yourself if you're interested in one. Now then, uh, you get a little bag of bits and pieces with it. Here is a mini jack. I guess that really is so that you can plug into the processor for the audio going in and then you can come back out again to headphones or speaker system or something so you can actually hear what this thing is displaying. Uh, there's also quite a beefy power connector there. Now this takes 5 volts, maybe up to 5 amps and uh, the processor I think believe that's a USB connector so you can just plug it into a phone charger and that needs another five volts for that but this is going to be quite uh, hungry so you're going to need a very good sort of five volt power supply to actually run this properly right okay the next bit yep there you go there's the little power supply that's got the USB on it so that's going to be for powering the actual processor and uh, that's the multi-way connector to go from the processor to the display. And here is the brains, if you like. Little board with one chip on there and crystal, not a lot else. But uh, I'll zoom into that and show you that in a moment when we put it all together. There's no soldering or anything involved in this, so it should be pretty easy to assemble. And a little note. Haha. -ha. This is the destruction manual. Oh dear. Right, I'll zoom into this for you. You've got one sheet of instructions and it's all in simplified Chinese. Uh, so it's two color music frequency spectrum use explain, which is instructions. Uh, the di display using 32 by 64 color dot matrix module can display red, green, yellow color combinations display in seven modes, one of which is automatically changed through the first six modes. So I guess the first mode just cycles through all the other six modes that you can select this to. The display control card and display module needs to access DC five volt power supply. The control card uses power and audio through the USB import. So that means this USB input on here is where your five volts and audio can go in. But looking at the circuit, uh, it's kind of connected off to this 3.5 mil jack anyway. So I, yeah, I guess you could put five volts in there and the audio direct in here if you wish, because the, the lead looks like it's got its three and a half mil jack and this is for the five volt power supply and it sort of sends all that through this little USB connector here. So it's not really a standard USB connector because it's got audio running up the center pins, I'm guessing. 
Okay, the display card needs to use a direct current of 5 volts, 5 amps, from a separate power supply. Please note the power positive and negative, if reversed, will burn the module. In other words, destroy it. Uh, take the signal input port. The Spectrum will full screen display is normal. Uh, probably means all the LEDs will come on and don't worry about it. That's that's quite normal. Uh, the 3.5 mil headphone will restore the bottom line of the display. So you, yeah, we'll we'll find out about that in a moment. Uh, if the mute under the end of noise is serious, there may be the power ripple too big. Uh, replace the high quality low ripple 5 volt direct current source. So if there's lots of interference, the saying use a better 5 volt power supply, I guess there. And set the input volume size and gain to control the show the amplitude at best. To control and show the amplitude at best. Uh, general computer volume open to 60%. Uh, and other than that, we've got a sort of little image here on how to stick it all together. Yeah, I was right about that little audio input. That's this one here. So you can plug into the device and then come back out of it again. So let's get this uh, connected up. It looks like I need a good sort of powerful power supply. I've got one 5 volts at 3 amps. I'm sure that will do. And I'm guessing that's going to be plugged into here. Oh, I haven't done my chip search have I what have we got on the chips here uh, that looks like MP5020 GP I guess that's just to do with matrix switching it's sort of a management that's why there's eight of them in there and on the input here that looks like SM245 TS that's a, an octobus transceiver same one there and these two things here, I'm reading it upside down now, SM5166P, that's kind of uh, a PLL synthesizer. I don't mean a synthesizer like a Moog or anything. It's for clocking and frequency dividing and things like that. So anyway, I shall plug this in and we'll get it powered up and see Oh, that's weird. Oh, I'm guessing that's so that you can go on to a second one and a third one. Because I noticed the display on this, the LEDs go right to the very edges so that you could add another and another, so on and so forth, and make it as big as you wanted to. And then you would have your signal coming in here and then out into the next one and the next one. And so you could really make quite a big display. And uh, I'm guessing that... that you know, without this, I'm guessing you could send a signal into this anyway and use it for displaying text and things like that. If you've got that sort of knowledge to program pics, pic chips and, uh, you know, little pie kits and things, I'm guessing you'll be able to chat to this because this is the same sort of display that they use in some of those big message boards and they just have a lot of these all in a row. Right. Like I said, no soldering involved, which is great. And this is pinned. It's got a, a little plug there, so you can only put it in one way around. So that's going to go into the in. Just says in on there. And this will, aha, let me just check here. All right, ground, top left. So if I keep the plug the same way then the ground is going to be the top left so that means because there's no keying on this set of pins here so you could put it on any way around which would be disastrous if you get it the wrong way around I guess so I'm hoping that is correct so it'll sort of come off there and into there like that if you're going to make one of these up with the red one to the top uh, right need to get a power supply separate for this according to the instructions and this lead here if I put say a mobile phone charger into that that should be the 5 volts for this device here so pay close attention to the way this is wired up 
because as the instruction says it will burn the unit as in destroy it now I've got 5 volt power supply but this only goes up to sort of 3 amps but I'm sure that's going to be enough oh look at that 5 volts perfect and uh, that obviously goes out to a, a second panel or a third panel if you want to add to this so I'll put that panel there hopefully we can see that on the camera and here's the processor unit now what I've done with the cable I've connected the mini jack into this speaker bar at the back here so I'll just turn that on and the USB goes into just a mobile phone 5 volt power supply so I'll plug this in here there we go and then we've got to put some music into this so I'm going to go in with one of these little mini jack to mini jack things because I actually don't like those but anyway plug that in there and plug this audio so it's going to go in here now that's powered up with the 5 volts now this needs to be powered up separately so that's a good sign now this may flicker on the video but to the human eye it doesn't look like it's flashing at all it's just uh, the refresh rate of the video so let's turn this on and play a little bit of my music put the volume up a little well just turn that down a moment so I can speak uh, that doesn't look bad I mean it's giving a sort of graphical representation of the music that's going in but I'm guessing this is the bass and this is the treble. Firstly, what I'll do is I'll play that music and I'm going to cycle through the six different displays that this thing has. So keep the music playing. So there's a little button on here and if you press that, it's swapped the colours over now. So the reds are the peaks instead of the green. Now it goes to yellow with green as the peaks. And this is more of a bar graph display. And I guess it's just going to swap the colours over for that as well. Yep, green with red on the top, yellow with red on the top. Now if we go to the uh, first settings, because there's seven settings on here. The first setting should just keep on changing every few seconds. There you go, it's gone into yellow. So yeah, it's, that's just sort of cycling through the six patterns that it can produce. So I'll keep it set on this one. Now if I uh, just pull the music back a little bit, uh, what I'm actually interested in looking at here is the accuracy of the waveform that it's actually giving. So what I should really do is put it on an audio generator and go through the frequencies and see how it handles that. So I've got the uh, spectrum analyzer set up on the iPad here. Now this is only using its microphone and just picking up the speaker behind there. So it's going to be picking all sorts of things in the background as well. But what I'm basically going to do is just sweep through a frequency uh, using a sine wave and sort of watch this and see if it's going to be similar to what the spectrum analyzer on here is showing me. So I'll just turn up the volume for this and the speaker and then I'll sweep through and see what happens. Well it's definitely got bass in there as this has and as I sweep up uh, I'm going to watch the lights and see if there's any sort of pattern moving along as I go up and down. So just here, I can see this is probably about 2000 hertz, or I'm not too sure actually, but it's definitely got a peak here. And if you watch this peak and this peak, 
As it goes downwards, this sort of goes down to the left. So yeah, it's uh, it is a spectrum analyzer. It's not the most accurate in the world. I mean, I don't know sort of where the bands are on this. I know this is the uh, low end down here and this is the high end up here, but uh, from where and to where, I really can't say. Uh, the problem with sound, of course, is that you get lots of harmonics and this is sort of trying to display all those harmonics and all the little tiny bits that are coming up on the bottom of the uh, spectrum analyzer here and it's sort of displaying all sorts of random things but they are actually there I'll just turn this to a that's it one of those see if this is any better you see look at these peaks here and here I mean these are moving to the right as they go up and then to the left as they go down. And this is obviously all the little harmonics. So... So yes, it's uh, doing what it's supposed to do. It's just not a really, really accurate thing. Uh, it's trying its best obviously. Now there's just one chip on here I'm going to peel this sticker off and just have a look at what that little processor is there that's doing all this work. Uh, so yeah don't expect a sort of laboratory grade spectrum analyzer but then you know it's not that expensive for the amount of LEDs and display and everything that you've got on here but visually yeah it kind of works. OK, on the board, there's just the one little processor here and a few spaces for extra things that they didn't include. Uh, that Chinese there just says audio. So I'm guessing there's another audio out going off here. I'm just going to peel off this label. It's a bit tight. And try and find out what that is underneath there. Uh, Oh, I can't read that. I might have to get something just to clean it up a little bit. Now, lighter fluid is the best stuff, I think, for getting this horrible stickiness off microchips or any of the gunk left behind from labels and things. So what have we got here? Uh, that's a STC 12C5A08S. S2, difficult to see. Anyway, it's a, an 8-bit microcontroller with onboard RAM and it'll have uh, its own analog to digital converter and things in there. So yeah, there you go. Nice simple little programmable chip in there. But yeah, there's uh, not a lot else to see really. That's about it. I am sort of wondering though, this is a kind of a, a standard uh, output here. So this display I guess you could use it for displaying lettering and uh, symbols and all sorts of things if you can hack into it. So yeah, that was a, an interesting look into this little spectrum analyzer, which is uh, visually quite nice, not accurate, but it's okay, does the job. And if you are interested in one of these, there's a link in the comment section below. And they've also got different variations of uh, the spectrum analyzers on the website now. Uh, if you found that interesting, please give us a thumbs up and if possible, subscribe. I've got more electronics and musical stuff on the way soon. My next task is another little Gitec oscilloscope. So that's going to take a bit of uh, soldering again and assembly. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. All the best. Bye bye. This is zoom number 25. the circuit board gone? What? Oh. Going to... Pepe?
Oh, my brain switched off. I know it's not the most accurate in the... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Or just how accurate it is, and that's the bloody phone ringing in the searches on YouTube, and uh, and that's a load of bollocks because I still forget what <laughs> stuff on the way. The next little trick is a Jitec trick, you bastard. But anyway, uh, this is what I'm going to take apart. No, stop on where you can get what do you mean you have a look in the link below it's in the comments you do <laughs> this size but anyway bollocks this is a thumbs up and uh hope you sound that i need a cup of tea i'm having a brain relapse why can't i get this right